Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to uh, another session of Chief's Money 2020. Another remote session due to the unforeseen circumstances that we are, have all found each other in this very particular year. This session is entitled From Zero to One Million Users and then How to Build and Keep Building Crypto Businesses. Uh, our distinguished guest and speaker in, for this session is Mr. Sejan Mahmutovic, one of the co-founders of CryptoMath. Welcome, Sejan. Hello, hello. Nice to be here. Uh, last year, we were in Zagreb. We were on a stage together. We talked a lot about crypto. We talked a lot about regulation. We talked a lot about future. And now, unfortunately, we have to do this via video link. But it's good to have you here, and it's good to talk to you. Yeah, look, it is what it is. I would also like to see you uh, in Zagreb in person, and that would be awesome. But, uh, you know, we have to live with uh, what we have. So, but uh, let's try to make the best of it. And, you know, let's just work hard and uh, move things forward and, you know, just get over this. Uh, Srijan, I know Cryptomat is a very decentralized business by, the, by its definition in many, many ways. Uh, you guys started uh, out of Ljubljana, but now you have people working all around Europe for you. And uh, you recently, you told me even moved to Estonia. Wh where are you now at the moment? Well, currently, uh, I'm in uh, Ljubljana uh, in, a, in a lockdown. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, uh, as you said, uh, basically, uh, I when we started the business, uh, it was important for us to find a uh, a jurisdiction that on one hand is uh, startup friendly, but on the other hand also has uh, some sort of a regulatory framework. And uh, Estonia was really the best solution for us. And uh, I, firm, I strongly believe that uh, the Estonian uh, environment is, uh, is really, really great for us as a startup. We can, you know, get so many connections from there. You can see uh, unicorns coming out of Estonia. So I should want to follow that path as well. Uh, but yeah, uh, the moment uh, we can, uh, yeah, the team, as you said, is uh, distributed uh, all around Europe. And uh, that's actually one of our advantages uh, and uh, also one of our key goals and strategies as a company, basically, uh, is to uh, bring the service into every household uh, in Europe. And um, basically, we believe that, you know, crypto belongs to everyone, not just to the privileged few. Privileged few. And so it has to be uh, available to everyone at the same terms. And in, for that reason, our service is translated into all, if not uh, most, if not all European uh, languages. Uh, because, you know, if, you, if you're dealing with money or finance in, in, any, in any way, you need to understand what you're doing. So that was, that's really important to us, essentially. But yeah, so I'm in uh, Uganda at the moment. It's, uh, it's a snowy day today. <laughs> it's winter is coming in so many ways uh, but uh, interesting tell us a bit more about uh, uh, a bit more about the evolution of crypto Mac. you guys have a very particular story uh, you grow to a very large number of customers um, and obviously you continue uh, you plan to continue growing uh, but then you also have had no outside investment so far which is very unique in this world that we live in you mean we had no ICOs or nothing like that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or, yeah. or ICOs and all that stuff. You know what? Uh, actually, uh, I, yeah, it, that's quite uh, fascinating, to be honest, um, uh, because we started from scratch, from zero. Uh, we had uh, no experience in the, in the fintech industry as a team, but uh, 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 what we did is, or, or one of our advantages basically is that, you know, we've developed products and me personally as an entrepreneur, I've, you know, built businesses before. So this is not my first business. And uh, uh, the team that we have is, is so amazing that we can basically build any product you can imagine. And um, that was a good start, right? <laughs> Being able to build products. But uh, that's, uh, so we approached it as a traditional business in the sense that, uh, you know, we need to, uh, make revenue to survive uh, and not depend on uh, outside funding. That was that, that score. That, that's what business is about, right? Uh, end of the day, uh, making that revenue and you know hitting those uh, those numbers. Um, 
initially we built a platform and uh, uh, it was it was uh, it was kind of slow to tell you honest and we were really looking for what, what for that you know holy grail in you know how to acquire new users and um, at the time we were uh, really uh, you know thinking okay what to do we had no budget uh, and so uh, so the only thing we could do is uh, you know just uh, do the daily grind you know uh, find different ways to approach users to approach different communities we did uh, a couple of really really interesting campaigns uh, one of the most initially when we you know launched the service we started off with collaborating with different uh, coins and different projects basically trying to helping them uh, or you know helping each other by uh, telling our customers what they are about and uh, they would say they would talk about us to their uh, communities so by you know joining forces we would kind of uh, get access to to some of the communities that didn't know about us before um, another really, really uh, huge thing that we did in terms of our recognition is um, basically we uh, joined, uh, we, we went into a partnership with a project called the uh, Engine and uh, they deal with NFTs. They're more kind of a, uh, into, into uh, games, well, gaming, not gambling, but uh, into games and NFTs and that sort of thing. And they're building a whole ecosystem where, you know, game devs and game players can, you know, really use the, utilize the blockchain in such amazing ways. And so we partnered up with them and basically built the first uh, blockchain based reward system. And that was a thing, you know, so many people were interested in it. We were also uh, published on uh, finance uh, Yahoo, uh, Yahoo section, um, uh, finance section on Yahoo. So uh, we got a lot of uh, positive feedback with that. A lot of people found out about us. And then we started doing um, uh, giveaways or uh, contests where we would actually partner up with game devs who would uh, integrate our NFTs into their games so that, you know, these NFTs basically were, were had more intrinsic value. Uh, and that was that was something interesting. Uh, maybe it was too early uh, to tell you honestly, uh, in terms of you know really reaching the mass market with this approach. However, I feel that you know we reach the those people who actually tell uh, other people about crypto. So it's like uh, tech savvy people and you know people who I don't know play games or are into tech and into NFTs and so on would then. Uh, know about us and you know when they were asked by their friends you know where should i buy crypto crypto they would they would most likely you know recommend us because we're so easy to use uh, and, and you know uh, ux is everything yeah you it, should you should uh you should probably have some um uh, lectures at uni and a business school about uh, customer acquisition i think that's that's uh, always something i know businesses crypto or not crypto are spending a lot of money and it's always this, you know, it's always this figure, like how much do you spend per customer acquired? And uh, I think you guys did a very good job there. So this is something that, how many, by the way, speaking of users, how many users do you have now? And what is your projection gonna look like in a year or two? Uh, well, we're currently closing into uh, 100,000 users. Our wow. goal is uh, to uh, reach 1 million users by end of 2022. And oh. um, basically, uh, what, uh, I think, the way things are uh, speeding up, uh, I think that's that's gonna uh, that's really that's a realistic plan, um, and we we're basically finalizing our uh, round of. You mentioned that we didn't get any uh, <laughs> investment or financing. Well, you know, um, we're now actually finalizing a round of uh, uh, VC investment, and uh, yeah, I think that's gonna really speed up uh, our the our uh, growth and. Uh, things like that so you know even on our we started hiring a lot uh i have to tell you so maybe if someone's watching interested in working in a crypto company you know check out our jobs section on the website uh a little promo there <laughs> i mean more and more people that i know from uh a lot of friends of mine and a lot of people i know from the industry that worked in uh let's call it traditional finance uh you know in banks and even uh major uh fintech startups like let's say traditional finance Technology startups are joining uh, are joining different types of crypto. You know, either uh, a hedge fund or another exchange or a startup. 
So that's it's very interesting to see these trends. Uh, of course, they are following these trends are slightly following the, the price of Bitcoin, but not only like more and more people are going in. Right. Yeah, I know what you're saying. So you're saying like, OK, whenever Bitcoin goes up, people get excited about it and they're like, yeah, yeah I want to be in crypto. But yeah, uh, but on the other uh, hand, there's uh, people, well, not just pe people like me or you know people that I work with, but there's also, as you said, people coming from the traditional finance uh, 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 sector into into these sort of businesses. And actually, I have to tell you, we need them, you know, especially in terms of uh, compliance, uh, regulatory requirements, uh, you know, dealing with uh, banks. Uh, because end of the day, there's this huge gap that we need to. Uh, close uh, between the traditional banking, financing, uh, finances, and finance, well, in general, and the uh, neo finance that we see today. And, you know, I, I'm sure you saw the news on uh, that PayPal is it, pay, pay, uh, PayPal in relation to crypto. So, and just like you know, that two years ago, that was the opposite, diagonally opposite. So today it's we're actually getting there. And, uh, Many of these companies, uh, I think, uh, will actually become uh, the new type of banks, which, uh, you know, yeah, well, people in their 20s might know as their primary banks or people in their you know, uh, younger people, teens might uh, find these companies to be their first banks. Interesting, In interesting point. But uh, I have I want to based on what you said, I want to open a lot of directions of what we're going to talk about. I think we're gonna run out of time at some point. Yeah, yeah. But, but the question is, uh, you mentioned uh, regulation. You mentioned Europe um, it being basically a pan-European company. All all your users in Europe is this a KYC requirement? That yes. Oh, no, no, it's actually it's like this. We we consciously decided that we want to uh, serve Europe. Is that the European Union or the the continent? Or uh, actually, it's the European Union. But uh, we do serve some uh, European countries that don't fall within uh, within the. Uh, do you serve some of the countries that recently left the European Union? Uh, well, yeah, like that. Okay. okay. <laughs> like that. But then you also, yeah, exactly. So we plan to serve. Uh, okay. Initially, our goal is uh, basically just to serve the European Union, of course, alongside uh, UK. Um, and uh, we didn't want to uh, uh, stretch too too wide uh, and try to cover, you know, Asia and Latin America, which might, you know, seem really uh, popular and an interesting thing to do. But uh, we actually want to have a strong foothold in Europe and uh, want to become uh, one of really one of the go-to places for crypto, uh, not just to buy or sell crypto, but basically to manage your wealth, to to earn an interest, to do other things that crypto will allow or allow us to, to do in the following years. Uh, we want to be that place in, in Europe by 2025. And uh, what this means is what we believe is we need to focus on Europe and especially with, uh, okay, uh, it's Europe, by the way, is also quite a difficult market. If you think of it, you know, many US companies have tried, you know, entering US, uh, I mean, EU markets, but end of the day, it's different cultures, different languages. It's much more different than, uh, let's say, more or less I don't want to say unified culture in, in the USA nowadays, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying, right? It's it's one market, whereas here we have multiple markets. And so, yeah. Uh, we mentioned uh, a little bit on regulation and compliance as well. And I know this is a huge, huge aspect for any financial and fintech business. And, you know, especially, especially <laughs> crypto business. Uh, what would you estimate what percentage of your time and your company's time goes on, you know, you spend on basically managing and handling regulators, working with regulators and uh, complying with all the rules? Yeah, look, uh, that's a that's a whole topic, you know, we could talk about the whole day. But uh, when I started this uh, business, I was not aware that in, uh, we're going to have to be dealing that much uh, with this uh, subject. Uh, but uh, in fact, uh, I, I can kind of uh, say that we deal maybe about 30 to 40 percent of our work, in fact, is basically connected to, to you know, regulation being compliant and so on, but also working with uh, law enforcement and also trying to prevent to prevent fraud. Um, so we're as a company we're working with uh, on one hand with law enforcement and on the uh, on, on preventing uh, fraud 
And uh, on the other side, we're working with the regulators basically to stay compliant, uh, to uh, to understand what we as a company are supposed to do uh, to stay compliant. So uh, there's actually some good news uh, coming up in the future in the as in this aspect of the regulation, and that's the uh, meta uh, meet crypto meta regulation that's uh, going to be. I, I'm not sure if it's going to take place in two years. Or if it's going to be uh, released, uh, the, the the regulation, if it's going to be launched or whatever in uh, in two years, but uh, the regulatory framework is most definitely coming uh, to us, and that's good news because uh, it's going to unify how the European states actually tre treat crypto uh, as an asset or as a, as a, as a business, and it's uh, going to allow us to uh, passport our licenses to to different EU countries. So uh, that, that like, it's, like it's happening with banking in the EU right now, right? Sorry, like it's happening with with banking and other financial services in in the EU right now, right? Yeah, exactly. You you basically get a banking license somewhere, uh, like uh, I don't know in Ireland or uh, Lithuania or whatever, and you might uh, then uh, pay, uh, use that same license in a different EU country just by uh, registering with a, with the local regulator. Uh, with crypto, these things are uh, kind of an unknown, uh, and uh, because of that, when you approach uh, banking partners, payment uh, pr uh, providers, and so on, it's it's kind of a, a game of getting to know each other and understanding each other's businesses, understanding the risk involved, and uh, uh, it's just a whole different game. If we had a, a framework in place, it, things would be easier, rules would be set, rules would be, would be known, and banks and banking partners would, you know, I guess, work with us uh, in a much simpler, uh, simpler way than they, they, than they do today. Um, but yeah, things, if I look at things two years ago, they were much, much worse than they are today, uh, to tell you honestly. But there's, a, a, with the influx of new users into, into crypto, uh, the regulation or, you know, is, is, is really important, not not just to bother users, but basically to protect them as well. Uh, so it's our so that's one of our uh, key goals and in our strategy, basically to try and protect the end user from you know scam, fraud, that sort of thing, but also to help them store their crypto and manage their cryptocurrencies in a safe uh, safe environment uh, in in a, in a cool platform such as ours. Yeah, yeah. I, I believe. I mean, the regulation really, really is important in finance and people forget this. I, I, I always say like, yes, uh, regulators uh, uh, always, you know, have to do their job and they definitely don't have an easy job, I think, because they have this balance where they need to support businesses and help businesses, but then they also have to protect consumers. So hopefully, but as you said, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm very happy to know that in Europe as well, these things are moving really fast. And the regulators are doing their homework, right? And um, and and this crypto is moving forward. Um, let's talk a bit more about your product. You started, uh, you said, as an exchange, uh, and it's it's that's pretty straightforward. Uh, I'd say if someone is not really versed in crypto, you can relatively easily explain to them uh, what an, uh, a crypto exchange does. Um, and uh, but what about now? And especially what about how do you see which interesting and let's call them geeky products. Are you going to uh, looking to move into in the next year or two, perhaps? Yeah. Uh, well, today, uh, CryptoMet is uh, for uh, is basically a crypto a crypto exchange where anyone can buy and uh, sell uh, cryptocurrencies, but they can also uh, uh, store them and hold them in a in a in a uh, integrated wallet. Uh, we support most large caps, and uh, we're soon going to be adding even more coins and tokens to to, to the platform. Specifically, uh, uh, now, by the way. Sorry. How many do you have now? How many how many tokens and coins? We have thirty plus uh, tokens on the platform, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, initially the focus was uh, on uh, really uh, okay, just establishing or setting up the fiat gateway, the sort of the so-called fiat gateway uh, platform, which means that you can buy crypto with euro, yeah, via, using your credit card or via a bank via bank transfer, or uh, in some countries uh, we have different payment methods that you know might be popular in those countries. Um, we 
June plan on releasing uh, uh, multi, uh, well, different cur uh, uh, fiat currencies to the platform. So, for example, uh, you might uh, make a deposit in Croatian Kuna, or uh, you might make a deposit in uh, Hungarian uh, foreign as well. So why th this is really important for us because it's a, it's a, it's another step in uh, bringing the, the the whole project uh, closer to the to the local market and uh, you know being really hyper local. Uh, so this was first uh, that was setting up the exchange and the ability to buy and own crypto was step number one. Uh, step number two is uh, we just we just recently re uh, released a savings account, which is basically uh, an analogy to what people uh, know from from banks uh, when you know they used to get an interest rate when they uh, made the deposit in the bank. Now such a thing is also possible with crypto. We know that you know we have staking, uh, we have lending and borrowing, and that sort of thing. But what we did is uh, people can actually now uh, have a savings account on CryptoMat and, and earn an interest rate uh, just by holding their crypto on the platform. But moving on, you know, uh, I see uh, uh, decentralized finance projects evolving. I, uh, and uh, we're actually following the, the, uh, the, the innovation and we're actually uh, uh, on the frontier of innovation so we know what's happening but not everything that you know is being uh, developed and that comes our way is uh, really suitable for retail markets so um, the savings accounts uh, borrowing uh, stake uh, you know lending that sort of thing might be but I don't think we're quite there yet with the lending and the borrowing but we are with the staking in our view mm -hmm. uh, we might see uh, NFTs explode and uh, we will follow that. And uh, as uh, if once we find uh, you know an awesome utility, we are going to support that. So um, yeah, we see ourselves uh, as a, as a crypto platform that's going to evolve. Today we are a fiat gateway. Tomorrow we are a decentralized finance uh, uh, crypto platform, basically. And uh, the day after that, we're uh, a new bank. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. That's a good way to go. Um, you said uh, we talked about products, we talked about compliance as well. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the company itself. You said you uh, are very decentralized, you moved to Estonia as well uh, for various reasons among others, but then this is almost like a culture that you that you uh, want to want to harbor in Cryptomat, right? Like a pan-European thing. You you want to you want to be present everywhere also physically. Um, how many how many people has CryptoMat had have now? And you said you're hiring a lot, right? You you you're trying to hire now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so at the moment we have about thirty uh, people in the team, but uh, we are hiring for another for an additional ten uh, different roles at, at this moment. Um, yeah, the the team be, uh, being distributed across Europe. Uh, so our you know especially with this COVID uh, situation that we see today. Um, Actually, this does not affect uh, how we work as a company at all. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, of course, it does, you know, locally, it affects everyone. Uh, you know, maybe I didn't put it correctly. It does affect everyone. But I mean, right. of, yeah, but I mean, the operation, operation wise, uh, it, we, uh, actually, we're a remote first company. Uh, so uh, we have people uh, we work with from, you know, of course, from Estonia to uh, Romania to uh, UK, uh, you know, France, Spain, you know, all over the Serbia, uh, Turkey, all over the place, and uh, I think that's actually uh, that that is the the as I see it, the the, the EU, the the point I mean, and and the philosophy of why the EU was created, in my view, so mm -hmm. that we can actually work uh, across with our peers and colleagues from different EU states and basically build businesses and become uh you know competitive to uh be competitive with you know to, to to the us companies and you know even uh south asian or even chinese companies so uh it's really important and also th what this does it brings a lot of diversity into the company a lot of different views uh and uh, and that's really important uh because you know if you're just confined to to one different uh to, to a single country in the eu you might you know kind of be biased towards uh some things but when we have team members across uh, distributed across Europe uh, you know this really does bring a lot of value 
And with the tools that are available today to communicate online and work and collaborate online, I see no issue why would we wouldn't do that. And and also it's safe. Uh, so yeah, uh, fits uh, agenda. Also good good luck on that. And I'm 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 sure you guys are going to succeed in actually having this. I like the word also pan-European approach. And and I think Europe is pretty small. Like uh, two time zones covers or three time zones cover all of Europe. So you can easily you don't have these issues like when you work across. Asia when it's like six or seven hours or, or even the even from you know one continent to the other. Um, one other point that we can't really escape from and you mentioned COVID which was a great segue to my next question and you it, it's very interesting to see from operation standpoint that it doesn't affect you in terms of you know managing your day-to-day -day business but how did it affect your uh, user numbers and your traffic numbers? You know what? In the last six to nine months, yeah, uh, this is uh, this is interesting. I mean, um, we we were we we didn't notice. Uh, I mean, actually, I don't. I cannot find a correlation between uh, COVID COVID and our revenues. I don't think it's uh, really related. Our revenues usually grow when things uh, are moving on crypto markets when there's news on the crypto markets you know when paypal enters you know the crypto uh, scene um, that sort of thing and uh, there, there were a lot of uh, you know uh, me media covered mostly you know covid covered you know the elections the protests the uh, that sort of thing and less less and crypto got much less coverage so I would actually say that people now, like a regular person nowadays, doesn't even know the price of Bitcoin or doesn't follow that. So, actually, if there was no, if there was, if there was no COVID, I actually think we would maybe do even more because the media would report more on, more on it. Uh, but still, the growth has really been amazing for us, and uh, maybe there are uh, there's a there's a, a an opposite story that you know does in fact. Uh, mm -hmm. mean that you know we grew because of COVID somehow, but yeah, I mean COVID has affected some of our. I mean some of our team members did you know were uh, you know positive as well. I mean looking at it you know on on the personal level, but luckily none of none of the team members are you know have any consequences or, or anything like that. So I'm really happy about that. Um, but yeah, uh, I hope that uh, COVID won't affect us. Uh, actually, as you kind of suggest, I think we will actually grow even more because it's much, much for, more focused into digital than ever before, uh, in, basically in the history of uh, humankind, right? So um, I see things uh, moving up, especially when uh, uh, the local, you know, the local markets realize, that, oh, oh, things are moving with Bitcoin, they will find us. And we're the, usually the one of the best services uh, locally uh, all around Europe. So, yeah, I see positive things uh, in the future. What I what I understood from what you said is that your business, I um, mean, uh, at least in terms of numbers, is more affected by probably by the U.S. election than by COVID and the whole lockdown. In terms of, <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but actually, it's exactly that. There was so much coverage about this election, and you know, uncertainty. I, and you and you're right. And I ask this question because I know, for example, in the U.S., especially and in Europe, retail trading has gone through the roof because people were at home, and they they were like uh, they were you know playing with their phones, and then suddenly they have this great UX tools, and I can buy some shares of Google. And that's so cool, and uh, especially if you bought I don't know Tesla, or whatever. And now you see like a 400 percent increase, and it, uh, same of course goes for crypto. If you if you if you played with it three or four months ago, um, uh, this is we're running out of time. Uh, Stejan, I have one interesting question for you. Maybe for people that are not so versed in crypto that are watching this, um, yeah. if I am a young, uh, let's say professional, you know, you're like a, a 30, 40 year old lawyer, or you work in an insurance company, or you have your own business, a restaurant, and you have some disposable income. Uh, how much would you suggest to them of their disposable income should they keep uh, in crypto assets? Uh, you know what? Uh, that's actually you can say all by the way, right? <laughs> you can say all of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, uh, this is kind of a, a investment advice uh, question, but I can still answer it, right? 
uh, uh, I can answer it for, for me personally, how I, how I think about this, but of course, anyone, everyone, you know, should choose for themselves. So personally, I mostly believe in uh, Bitcoin uh, as, a, as a storage of value, as kind of a digital gold type of thing. And I see it in the future being exactly that. Uh, when it comes to other cryptocurrencies, I really cannot say it's just pure, you know, it's, it's speculation and you really need to follow uh, how those projects are evolving and whether they are at their end or they're just beginning and, you know, they have potential to grow. Uh, but when it comes to how much of your disposable income you should put into crypto, I think this question is the answer to this question is the same as uh, as you know uh, uh, an investment advisor would uh, uh, basically ask the, the the person who is investing. You know how much money can you basically uh, invest into uh, into your uh, into building your portfolio, whatever that might be, crypto, uh, gold, uh, stocks, uh, real estate. So uh, it's like, I guess, you know, you need to probably put your eggs in, uh, in, in multiple uh, baskets so that, you know, they don't break all at the same time if, if, if shit uh, hits the fan. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no. Yeah, so uh, how much to put into crypto uh, uh, is, well, it's a, it, I think it's a personal preference. So, yeah. Yes, of course. Uh, just to make, sh uh, make sure, like, I didn't want to ask for investment advice for our audience. This was more asking for, like, a direction uh, uh, of crypto for people to explain where we think the crypto markets uh, could go and especially for people that maybe uh, you know they always hear what you said as well diversify your portfolio keep your eggs in different uh, not in one basket and uh, but people are still kind of catching up and I think as you said as well a point that you made before uh, the media it's still of course there are huge uh, crypto news platforms now and crypto news media but then if you watch day to day, you know, television uh, and, and the major newspapers, unless they're business oriented, you're not going to find much news about that, except here and there an ad. So maybe this will, I think, change a lot in, in the next. You know what? Uh, maybe one thing like uh, if, if uh, you're uh, not into crypto or investments in general, uh, what I see uh, a common mistake that people make is, you know, uh, they buy some crypto and because these, you know, they get the crypto app, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and then they buy and sell and buy and sell and they over trade. So maybe an advice is if you already go into crypto and you're not a versed trader, then just, uh, you know, hold your crypto and, uh, you know, uh, relax, you know, mm -hmm. give it some time. So maybe, maybe just that. Uh, indeed, indeed that. Uh, Sergeant, this was, this was a great talk. Thank you so much. I think we're running out of time. I really, really, yeah. truly do hope that we will do this. I have to do this in person next year <laughs> because I think we're all sick with this. Uh, the whole world is in this. We want to get, we want to get rid of it. We miss the conference and we miss talking, yes. we miss talking in person and traveling. Uh, thank you so much. It was a pleasure last year. It's definitely a pleasure this year. And Hopefully it will be a pleasure uh, next year in person. The pleasure is all mine. And I also hope to see you in uh, person soon. And I wish you guys uh, all the best. Perfect. Thank you.